Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 3rd of October 2011. We've had a couple of M flares and a host of C flares, so things may be warming up on the Sun. But first, let's deal with today's trivia question. It is estimated that there are over one million man made objects orbiting the Earth at the current time. Only about a thousand of those are satellites, and only about half of those satellites are working. The question is what was the first man made object to make it into space? And in what year did that happen? The answer will be given at the end. I'm going to return briefly to the uh, comet that we were been discussing yesterday and the controversy that I seem to have stirred up by pointing out that the comet had nothing to do with the CME that followed just after its uh, supposed impact. People have accused me of not using the NRL data. However, if you listened to my video yesterday, you would have heard that I actually said I used the SOHO data. I just didn't show it because it was in the form at that time of an animated GIF file which my software can't use. Perhaps Santa Claus will send me some better software this Christmas. Who knows? But in science, you can't just say, it seemed to be that way, therefore it is. What you need to do is show quantitatively that your assertion is true, which is what I thought I did yesterday. And I note that nobody's been able to poke a hole in any of my scientific arguments. So here's some more evidence. Here are four frames from the uh, Soho movie showing the comet approaching the sun. In the second frame, I put a green arrow next to the comet, going from the point of the comet to the end of the bright point of its tail. The blue arrow next to it is the equivalent arrow from the previous frame. And you can see that the arrows are getting longer, so the comet is getting bigger and bigger as it gets closer to the sun. The next frame at uh, 2000 shows that the comet had, by that time, impacted the Sun, even assuming that the comet had not got any longer. That would put the impact time at approximately 1900, which is what I concluded yesterday. The coronal mass ejection is an hour and a half to two and a half hours after that. Notice also that the uh, coronal mass ejection is heading east, whereas the comet should be heading northeast. So we have a problem here. We have a tiny comet that's going a couple hundred kilometers per second, supposedly impacting the Sun, and producing a coronal mass ejection that is going three times faster and with a mass that's at 10 to 100 times larger than the largest comets that are known. Somehow it doesn't fit, does it? When those supporting the comet CME theory uh, can explain all of those factors, let's discuss it. Final killer argument in all of this is we can actually see the site where the coronal mass ejection was launched from. At 1730, this active region starts to show some increased levels of activity. By 2045, post-flare loops have already formed and the CME is on its way. It's actually impossible for the comet to have hit this particular spot, as it's coming from the west, and this is in the eastern hemisphere. Even if that were not the case, chances of the comet hitting an active region are about one in a thousand. So if you want to base your argument on a one in a thousand chance, go right ahead. But it's not very convincing. Well, let's move on to something more interesting. In the last 24 hours, we've had one M flare and a series of sea flares, some of which are fairly large. This means that some part of the Sun must be becoming more active. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what's going on. We have six officially numbered regions on the disk, including the new region 1309 near the northeast limb. There are also two as yet unnumbered regions on the disk. Let's start in the northwest with region 1302. Although this is still a fairly large region, it is decaying quite rapidly. We have to be a little careful here because as it gets closer to the limb it will appear to get smaller, just from a foreshortening point of view. But there does seem to be genuine decay both in the uh, second leader spot and quite significantly in the trailer region. In a roll reversal, region 1302 produced three C flares and an M flare, whereas region 1305, which has been the most flare productive to date, has only produced one C flare. And I think you can see why, because the region has decayed quite a lot. Many of the satellite spots have disappeared entirely, and what spots are left are much smaller than they were before. Noah seems to think that this region has grown. I disagree. I think it's decayed. Regions 1306 and 1307 have remained very similar over the last 24 hours, and have produced no major activity. Similarly, on the northeast limb, region 1309, although it's much larger than the other regions, um, has not produced any major flares either as yet. In the southeast, the uh, region 1308 has all but disappeared. However, a new region to its west has appeared quite rapidly. It's worth us keeping our eye on this because it might develop into a major region. In the sunspot of magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, I would focus on the emergence of this new region in the southeast. 
and in the magnetic movie look for other bipolar regions emerging quickly like this. This should be a harbinger of new regions forming in the next day or two. Once again the AIA team on the Solar Dynamics Observatory don't seem to have their act together and we have very short abbreviated movies of the uh, transition region and lower temperature corona so I'll just show those for context and move straight along to the high temperature image from the GOES SXI instrument. Here I'd like to concentrate on the so-called ring of fire, all the active regions in the northern hemisphere that seem to be interconnected with one another. There seems to be some initial signs that the southern hemisphere is beginning to form a similar ring. If so, the southern hemisphere might be starting to participate fully in the rise to solar maximum and things should start getting lively around here for the next few months. From the combination of the C2 and C3 instruments on Soho, we can see there was a beautiful coronal mass ejection off the uh, northwest limb. Oh, and look, no comets. From the particle monitors on the ACE spacecraft, we can see that the density of the solar wind has remained remarkably constant, but the temperature and the velocity of the solar wind has been steadily dropping for the last 24 hours as the effect of that coronal hole that I discussed yesterday has moved on. Meanwhile, the high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes has gone back to high levels and the proton event is completely over. From the NOAA 19 satellite, we see that the auroral zones are much quieter than they were yesterday and have retreated a little bit further towards the poles. The KP index, a measure of how disturbed the Earth's magnetic field is, has quieted down also, varying between 0 and 3. And there are no space weather alerts at the moment. Uh, however, there was a short period of minor radio interference uh, yesterday. So in summary then, the X-ray background has dropped to B5, the sunspot number has increased to 92, radio sun intensity has dropped to 131 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to 390 km per second with a density of about 1 proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are rated as quiet. So my forecasts for the next 24 hours are that C flares are likely, M flares remain possible, but X flares are increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number should go higher, CMEs remain likely, solar wind speed should remain low, and the geomagnetic storm is still possible. From the composite coronal image we can take a look and see that there are no major regions due back for at least another 4 or 5 days. So if you'd like to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the uh, links in the description box below. If you'd like to see some earlier editions of the Sun Today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you'd like to keep abreast of what's going on on the Sun, please subscribe, you're more than welcome to do so. The answer to our trivia question is the first man-made object to make it into space was a V2 rocket, launched in Germany in 1942. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.